Nathan and I got plus one. What did you get? Who's with me? Nathan's not because you didn't listen to what I told you to do. Your thing is crazy. Put your sweatshirt in your locker. Yeah, I'm trying to look at my face. Look at that. I'm too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah.
Yeah, you ISIS. Like, I mean, you're not like ISIS. No. Doesn't require you to talk. No, this is what you think. Thank you. We'll find out what you. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't know anymore. Yeah, Lucas, come on, get to the house. I don't know. Wait, like, why is it so hot? Yeah, why is it hot there? She just said, what did you say? A hot spot is something that's always in the news. Oh, oh why did you do that? Hot spot. I mean, it's near the foot. Near the equator. Rarely is there a day where you can't pick up a newspaper and see an article about something in the Middle East. Of course, the pandemic has overshadowed all of that, but terrorism. You're listening to reasons why you think. Oh, Who has something? Terrorism. Oh, you just told me. Terrorism. Uh, what? No, I've never heard of it. I'm proud of it. Wait, what? Okay. Um, it's in the middle, it's between Africa, Asia, and Europe, so it has a lot of trade going through it. So trade? Um, Logan, you want to share with what's so amusing? Yeah, I, I'm in yeah, for a good sure. joke, Logan. You want to tell me? We share people a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. People that laugh for no reason at all, they put them in little rooms with well, yeah, he should be one of them. padded walls. Oh, the Taliban. Or just echo like a terror. Pretty sure echo Okay, let's look at this sheet. This is our notes. So across the top, we have the culture geography. Three major world blanks started in the Middle East. Wars. Come on, wars. Three oil things. Three world religions. Three world religions. Oh. Started in the Middle East. What are they? Islamic, Hinduism. Raise your hand if you think you know. Islamic. Islam? <laughs> so, one of them. Catholicism. Uh, Christianity. Is that in cultural ge geography? What? It's the first one. What's the third one? Uh, the Jewish religion. Buddhism. Jewism. Jews. Oh, the Jewism. Jewism. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Christians. Oh, is where Kyle came from? Kyle? <laughs> Economically, a major occupation, the major occupation in Southwest Asia is what? In other words, what do most of the people do there? Farm. 
salesman. Okay, they, it is agricultural, but it's not just farming. They mine. They miners. Because another reason you could call the Middle East a hot spot, literally, lava. Okay. Climate change. Most of the Middle East is a desert. So the agricultural things that they do, they are nomadic herders. Okay? So you could say farming. You could say agriculture. But again, the majority are nomadic herders. Why? What's a nomadic mean? Uh, they don't have a home. They wander. They wander from place to place. Why do they do that? Because they're leaving when it gets cold. It's not going to get cold because they're in the desert. Yeah, yeah. Because so they, they resources? What resources are they looking for? They water. 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 Gold. Water. Aqua. Okay. Water. Okay. So one. nomadic <laughs> means they're traveling from place to place. The reason they travel from place to place is because Aqua. they are looking for water. Or the riddle who are most of the people in the Middle East, they are happy people. You know why? Because they're oh no. Because of the United States. Because they're nomads. Ha <laughs> <laughs> oh. ha <laughs> Or another name for them. I get it. Who they are Bedouins? No, no, no. Really, that was a good one, not a Bedouin. I'll, I'll give you that. Because they're nomads. Why do you laugh like that? So, the major occupation in the Middle East, you can put agriculture or nomadic herders. The major resource we already said is what? Oil. Oil. Okay. Another reason it's a hot spot that we didn't get, okay, is the history, okay? The world's first civilizations developed in the Middle East, or in the first one that we studied in sixth grade was what? Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. Oh, yeah. Play a song. But they're really talking about this Iran arc that formed. Okay, this arc that forms across here, which was called what? Cradle of Civilization. An arc. Noah's Ark. It was called the Fertile Plain. Ark. Fertile Ark. Fertile Ark. Fertile Curve. Curve. Fertile Crescent. Oh, oh. How close. Okay. Oh, yeah, actually, I see so you could put that there. The world's first civilization developed in the Fertile Crescent. Okay. Although Africa, I mean Egypt, even though it's part of Africa, could be considered. I'm going to group these nations in Northern Africa with the rest when we say Middle East. Why? Even though they're on a different continent, culturally, okay, culturally, they are similar to the people on Southwest Asia continent. So I think your book calls this Southwest Asia. Yeah, okay, this this sheet, I don't think this sheet came from your book, because I don't think this is chapter 32, is it? Yeah, they call it Southwest Asia. <coughs> yeah, Asia. Probably Northern Africa. Um, they call it Southwest Asia. Between 3500 BC and 600 BC, great civilizations rose and fell in Southwest Asia. The blank developed writing. Who did that? Uh, the Sumerians. The Sumerians. What was the writing called? Cuneiform. Cuneiform. The cuneiform. Okay. What is it? How is that spelled? Yeah. Uh, and also the I first one is what? Sumerian. Okay. Zar 
are gone. We're filling out this sheet right here. Look, we're on the historical geography. So it's the so the world's first civilization developed in the Fertile Crescent or the Middle East. Okay, between 35 and 600 great civilizations rose and fell in Southwest Asia. The Sumerians developed writing called cuneiform. Who developed iron weapons? Uh, the Akkadians. Akkadians. Babylonians. They were a Babylonian people, but they were called the Neo Babylonians. The Hittites. Sumerians. The Hittites were the ones that developed iron weapons. Is well, all those other peoples were peoples of the Middle East, though. <coughs> And who established great trading networks? Babylonians. Because uh, he had great ships. He also developed one of the first alphabets. Oh, the Mayans. Romans? Who was the Persian? The Parthians. The Phoenicians. So you can see that Phoenicia was right here. Okay. They had great ships, they settled throughout the Mediterranean. Okay, physical landforms or physical features of the Middle East. And, well, we could just skip down to two. Most of the region we said has a what kind of climate? Arid. Desert. 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 Remember, you're supposed to keep your book marked where the climate map is. So whenever it's asked for a climate, all you have to do is go back and look at that. So like last, when we looked at Russia, you could just go back to that map. Let's go to it real quick. Here it is. Well, no, this is this is from the. They give you a climate map at the beginning here, but remember at the beginning of the year. Yeah. I told you to put a little bookmark here because as we go through the country. I, I told you that. Page fifty-six. Okay. You can see that most of it is all red few little orange, okay? Red means it's desert. And char what characterizes this desert? Flat and dry. dry. Okay? So, little rainfall. What else characterizes desert? Sand. Remember, the, what are the two things that you look at when you look at climate? Uh, humidity. humidity. That, you look at moisture and you look at what? Temperature. temperature. So we got moisture here. It's dry, and no it's moisture. Hot. And it's hot. And it's hot. Well, they, they, although they do have, deserts usually have great diurnal it's really cold in variation. Remember this? A frozen desert. No. Variation. Diurnal variation. That means the temperature in a given day, the ver the difference in the highest high and the lowest low. So great di diurnal variation means it gets what? Really hot and really cold. Gets r really hot and then during the night, it you know it's not cold by our standards, it's not freezing, but when your temperature's way up there and it drops that fast, okay, yeah. what's the thing that happens to your body? Uh, Just shot. like if you jump in a, a lake when it's too cold. Shot. people can die of this hypothermia. hypothermia okay so that's what happens even if if you have great diurnal variation that can happen orange gas and temperature. so the physical feature is again is rolling hills it's mountainous in various areas but most of it's again dry desert plains a lot of these countries have snow plows not to plow the snow, but what? Plow yeah. sand. Plow sand. Because sand drifts in over their roads. Yeah.
my son sent us some uh, videos for his Instagram. He is down in was down in Peru and Ecuador, and they had a rainstorm there, and a landslide which came across. Show, he's showing him driving across this river on his motorcycle. Looked like a very foolish young man. Then he showed where they went along the edge of a cliff on their motorcycle, looking down side. over the cliff when you had a space about this wide, and the, over there is what. And here's the mountain. His mom didn't really appreciate it. Okay. You're, she's just overreacting, guys. Large gaps temperature, like highest high, low, slow, frequency. I'm going to this So, because of these reasons, the Middle East is an important area, even though the majority of the countries there are what kind of countries? Islamic. So much. I don't know. Why does that matter? In terms of impact in the world, we usually we we group countries by what? Religion. In terms of economy, okay. Stop. You need to put it. Yeah, sure. What are they? I seriously guess at the answer. They do? Yes. Religion. Islamic. Religion. Islamic. Religion. 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 Uh, but we already said it's on here. No resources. Most of the people are farmers. Most of the people are farmers or engaged in some kind of agriculture. We said they're nomadic herders. If the majority of the people are engaged in that, that tells you. Okay? In a developed country, what are the most people engaged in? Uh, like Sales. Heavy. Okay, some type of manufacturing. Okay? If you go to the cities in these areas, though, they're going to look what? Agriculture. They're developed. They're going to look developed. Because yeah. their cities are modern, just like ours. But the majority of the people are out in the rural areas. Okay? And if you look at the money, most of the money earned, again, is from oil. The danger of that is like, it's a little better now, but the danger if all your resources are in oil, what's the danger? You're going to run out of oil. And when you guys see Oil is a product of supply and demand. The more oil, what? Less demand. We're happy. Less demand, what? Less prices. Less prices. I'm happy because then I don't pay as much for my gasoline. It's like two dollars and fifty cents, right? Like yeah. Now it's up to two sixty. I was paying at the beginning of the year under two dollars. Yeah. Back and I bought it a couple times for a dollar seventy. How dare they? Okay. How dare they have coronavirus? Get back to work. Part of that has. <laughs> How dare they charge? You have one job. Corona cannot legally affect you without your consent. Say no. It's not making it clear. Just say no. Yeah, I'm the I'm thirteen and Corona's nineteen. Okay. Uh, another big part of the Middle East. Okay. Probably the biggest part. Why you're going to see it in the news all the time, though, is this one. Okay. Oh, guess who said These that? religions, and particularly the problem, and it isn't necessarily so much a religious problem, it's, it's a historical uh, problem. Oh, yeah. like, well, because so part of the culture in the Middle East is like we see in the Old Testament in the Bible. Yes. We're getting into Which is what? An eye for an eye. For an eye. What does that mean? Oh, okay. you, revenge. Okay. Somebody does something to me, we're going to do something back. And usually the something back is what? Worse. Sometimes it's worse. Okay. That's where the terrorism comes in, too. The biggest reason most of the Middle Eastern countries hate the United States. We're not. Christians. Christians. Is because most of the Middle Eastern countries hate 
the Persia. country of Military. Israel. Oh. And as we study this, okay, as we study, we're going to find out. Okay, and the United States is one of the greatest supporters of Israel. Israel. Anybody that supports Israel then is going to be an enemy to most of the Middle Eastern countries. But we're going to see exceptions to that too. Saudi Arabia is one of our stronger allies in the Middle East. And Saudi Arabia is the birthplace of which of these religions? Islam. Islam. Really? But a lot of the times in our foreign policy towards the, the Middle East, basically, a lot of times the foreign policy is based on the lesser of two evils. Maybe there's, we might not agree with either group, but we're going to what? Um, uh, learn. We're going to support the group that's the lesser of the two, which, again, creates problems when things change. Wasn't Israel founded? What, what was that? There's one country in the Middle East where they founded after. Yeah, Israel. We're going to be studying that. Now, as you looked at the maps, okay, what else could you tell me as you looked over these pages, 400 to 411? What else can you tell me about? Again, this chapter, this is more than one chapter. We're going to be skimming over, focusing on certain ones because because a lot of similarities exist, and it would take too much time to cover each individual country of the Middle East, so we're going to be just taking it more as a kind of a snapshot picture overall. And, and again, your two chapters do not include the countries up here in Northern Africa. Egypt, Libya, Algeria, Morocco, even Mauritania, Mali, the northern part of Niger, Chad, and Sudan, all of those pretty much have the same uh, in terms of Islamic culture that we're going to see in Southwest Asia. Again, the exception, and the exception here to developing and developed countries is what country? Egypt. America. Saudi Arabia. Uh, Yemen. Iran. Egypt. Israel. Israel has only been. Israel is the only developed country. A lot of countries don't bad for the Jewish people. And as we study the history, it's a wonder that Israel still exists. Okay. But they have flourished when basically they've been surrounded by enemies since their creation in 1947 or 8, one of those. It was 29. Who okay. were they? Hitler. Yeah, but he said enemies plural, so he... Hitler. Turn to page 410. Sweet mustache dude did not like... Sweet mustache? He didn't have a cool mustache. Annoying kid. Thank you for those that are listening and are turning your book to page 14. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks, Thanks so welcome, Mr. Harrell. Mm -hmm. So, chapter 17 deals with the Mediterranean countries. Chapter 18 deals with the ones that are more inland. The majority of these countries are in Asia. What's the exception? Uh, uh, the African one. If we were, the, the book doesn't cover those African ones. And we're not going to... We're not going to cover the Af but I am saying that these African countries are the ones. We're going to do Africa projects after we study the Middle East. Oh, great. And you'll be able to pick one of these other countries if you want. Except for Egypt, since most people know a lot about Egypt already. Really? 
turkey, that little piece of turkey that is between the Black Sea and the Aegean Sea. That little peninsula that Istanbul is located on that used to be called what? Anybody know what Istanbul used to be called? Uh, Constantinople. And before that was Byzantium, or after that was Byzantium, when it was the Byzantine Empire. But that little piece right there, that's part of Europe. The rest of these countries are Asia. That's why if, you ever, if I ever ask which of the countries is the most European, it's what? Turkey. Turkey. Because Turkey is, European. even though it's still mostly Islamic, they are, they are uh, <coughs> moving toward European culture. Why would they do that? The reason most people do things like that. Money. Yeah, economically, it's going to profit them. So, on 412, who would like to read? Mm. You like the seventh grade now? What was it, the seventh grade? What? Seventh grade are usually oh, silent sorry, when they ask for volunteers. Well, then he's Page 412. You get to read at least a sentence and call on somebody. If they don't pay attention, they owe me a service. Okay. Speaking of which, we've got a big long line. If you want to be in out of uniform on Friday, you got to get those off. Great. So on 412. If you live there. Why is that? Because it's so hot. Because of how high they are, it gets really cold. Okay, remember, every thousand feet, what? It gets hotter. It's about three degrees temperature. So the exception here to the desert climate are these countries, because along their coasts, what? They are. It's just like the rest of Southern Europe, it's what? It's the ideal climate most people like, which is what? Mediterranean. Mediterranean climate. What's Mediterranean climate like? Uh, uh, very cool. 70s. Much of rain. Weather. Cool. Sunny all the time. 70s. Okay. Okay. Eastern Mediterranean region lies at the crossroads of Europe, Africa, and Asia. In ancient times, Greek colonists settled here. It was part of the Roman Empire. Geographically, however, it was entirely in Southwest Asia. Countries in the Eastern Mediterranean make up part of a larger region called Southwest Asia. This region is sometimes referred to as the Middle East. Europeans first called the region the Middle East to distinguish it from the Far East, which included China and Japan. As you can see on the physical map on the next page, a narrow waterway separates Europe from Asia. This waterway is made up of the Dardanelles, the, uh, the, Bo the Bosporus, and the Sea of Marmara. Large Let's stop there for a sec, because a lot of students, when they do their map, they say, where are these? Where's the Bosporus and the Dardanelles? They're giving you, telling you where it is right now. Okay. Everybody see where it is on the map? I see Bosporus. So right before you get into the Sea of Marmara, Marmara from the Aegean Sea, okay, that's the Dardanelles. Go, go ahead. Large ships travel through the waterway, which connects the Black Sea to the Mediterranean Sea. The Bosphorus also splits the country of Turkey into two parts. A small part lies in Europe and the rest in Asia. The Asian part of Turkey includes the large peninsula called Anatolia. In ancient times, what was that called? Constantinople. 
No, that that peninsula. Oh. Okay. This peninsula. Oop, that's giving you the answer. What was it called? Asia Minor. The Jordan River begins the Syrian flows through Israel and Jordan. The river fi uh, finally empties into a large river called the Dead Sea. As the name suggests, the Dead Sea contains little life. Only bacteria lives in the lake to extend its healthy water. Luke! <laughs> Thanks, man. You know, you're a great friend. You're welcome. Great person. Where's your book? See, I asked you to go get it. Is it his mom? He's on, you photographic memory. I didn't want to be mean and ask again. Mm -hmm. so go get it. On some mail. Nathan. Uh, only bacteria lives in the lake extended in salty water, the world's saltiest lake. Its surface is 1,000 degrees in the world. See, it. orange is near, blue is sea level, the lowest point of any continent. As you can see in the map, two mountain systems stretch across Turkey and the Pacific Mountains run east, west, along the north, northern. So stop there. That's also on your map, so when you're looking for where the Taurus Mountains are. So I could now say, you're either with me or you're Dead Sea. So you can see the people that are floating in the Dead Sea. Anybody uh, swim in the Dead Sea? Um, no, it's low. My daughter has. Is she dead? Why would she? Why do they call it the Dead Sea? What? Because they're so slow, it makes you float. There's no animal can live in it. So only some brine, very, it's a, called a brine shrimp, are the only organisms that live in the Dead Sea. Just that salty. <laughs> Farther inland lies plateaus, hills, and valleys. A rift valley that begins in Africa extends northward into Saria. Hills rise on both sides on the rift. Two main mountain ridges run north and south. One runs from southwestern Saria through western Jordan. The other close to the to the coast runs through Lebanon and Israel. Climate and vegetation. The Eastern Mediterranean is mostly dry region. However, there are more variations than you can see on the map on the next page. Turkey's Black Sea coast and the Mediterranean's coast, all the way to the northern of Israel, of the Mediterranean climate. Much of interior Turkey experiences a steep climate. Central step. What's a step climate? What's the difference? Desert, we said, has no water. It has water. Up in the mountain. So it has a little more water than it's up in the, mountain. the desert. And so it has be more vegetation. Some of the big sandy deserts. Uh, Saudi Arabia has the biggest one called the Ruba Kalai Desert, which goes on your map too in the southern part. It was just vast expanses of uh, sandy dunes. Central Syria and lands farther south have a desert climate. A s small area of northwestern Turkey has a humid subtropical climate. The region's driest areas are in deserts. Much of Syria and Jordan is covered by the Syrian desert. This desert of rock and gravel usually receives less than 5 inches, 12.7 centimeters of rainfall a year. Another desert, the <coughs> Negev, lies in the south of southern Israel. Here the, here the temperatures can reach high as 114 degrees, 40, 60 degrees Celsius, and annual rainfall totals barely two inches. In, in such dry conditions, only shrubs can scatter throughout the region's desert. However, in other regions, vegetation is plentiful. In Israel, more than 200, 2,800 species of plants grow up throughout the country's various environments. The other thing that Israel did to make the Negev 
desert uh, in Puerto Rico. What do you think they did? So when we studied the different soils, we said one of the fertilest soils are where? In which vegetation or climate zone? The fertilest soils are in which climate zone? Deserts. They have some of the fertilest soils. Why? Because they have so many different minerals. That all you need is what? Water. Water. Oh. And if you bring water in, okay, just like the pictures of in sixth grade we showed you the Nile River in Egypt. Along the Nile what? It's all green. Okay, because of the rich soil from the desert. So that's what he, that's what Israel did, uh, used the irrigation methods to bring down into the Negev, and now they grow all kinds of vegetables and fruits in the Negev desert that, you know, if it only gets two inches of rain. But if you can irrigate that, bring that in from other areas or underground. Okay. Because the eastern Mediterranean is so dry, water is a valuable resource. People of this region are mostly farmers. The region lacks oil resources, but does have valuable minerals. In this dry region, the limited availability of water will not help when it's used. Commercial farms can only grow crops or rain or irrigation provides enough water. Caitlin. Yeah. Um, in drier areas, uh, sub subsistence uh, uh, like, yeah, yeah. farming and uh, livestock herding are common. What's subsistence farming? Well, I'm making enough for the world. So if you don't know that, you should write it down. What did you say? Subsistent farming means you're only growing enough to survive. Um, in the desert areas, available water supports a few nomadic herders, but no farming. So what do they call that? The areas in deserts where there is water? Oasis. Oasis. So that's what these nomadic herders are going. They're moving from one oasis to another. Luke. Thank you. Um, the region's resources include many m minerals, including sulfur, 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 mercury, sulfur. and copper. Syria, Jordan, and Israel all produce fa faucets. Fa Phosphates, phosphates, phosphates um, mineral salts that contain elements, phosphorus, uh, phosphorus seeds, I am butchering this, I so bad, are used to make fertilizers. This region also produces as asphalt, the dark tar-like tar mineral used to pave streets. What else do you use phosphates for? Terrorists use them. Oh, make what? Fertilizer. Okay. Yeah. Explosives. Explosives. No, fertilizer. Who wants to go? Me. Yeah, fertilizers. Um, All right. Uh, I guess I'll go with Lucas. Get off the phone right yeah, now. Explosives. Sorry, it's fine. Really hard fertilizer. Okay, your assignment is to read the next section two. Okay. Read section two more, and you can work on your map. So you got ten minutes to do that. More than ten minutes.